One of the very important elements in a power cord, other than the wire and the geometry of the wire, are the connectors. What I'd like to show you are the connectors called CopperCon connectors that we developed for our power cords. The CopperCon connectors are unique in that the base material, the base metal, that the contacts are constructed from is not brass, zinc, tin that's commonly used in even audiophile grade connectors. We've actually built connectors where the base metal is copper. The first connectors that we developed, since we're based in the United States, is we developed a, a US plug and an IEC plug, both of them using this copper base material. Next, um, the European market is quite large for us, so we developed a Euro-style connector. And then very soon afterward, we came out with a C19 connector for the power conditioners and big amplifiers. And then we developed a Swiss connector. Now we have other connectors um, in development. For instance, we have a UK connector um, that we've been designing for the last two years and we expect that quite soon. We've taken a connector and we've machined off one of the contacts which allows you to see the copper base material and you'll notice the rosy gold appearance of the copper itself and then externally you see a silver color. This is a, a very thin layer of nickel that protects the copper and keeps it from corroding. Just so you understand, a plating is usually measured in um, microns. So that means millionths of an inch. So the plating itself, whether it's gold, silver, or rhodium, is very thin and very small. And, but what's primarily carrying the current is the base metal itself. And that's why the copper con is so superior to even these audiophile grade plated connectors. The connector that I'm showing you is an audiophile grade connector. You'll notice that the, that the hole for the wire will accept a 10 gauge wire. If you try to put anything larger than a 10 gauge, wi 10 gauge wire in there, you have to de-strand the wire. That means you have to cut parts of the strands off to insert it in the connector. And this is what most people do when they're using this style. Now, <clears throat> you'll find these with a variety of platings, but the base metal is still brass. Now notice the very large wide openings that we've built for this connector. This allows us to terminate our conductors that can be as large as six, seven, five gauge conductors without having to de-strand them. Being an audiophile, most of us are a bit OCD, a little obsessive compulsive, and as a manufacturer, we're obsessive compulsive too. So even though we've built a great connector with fantastic contacts, um, that wasn't good enough. We st we're looking at all of the details. And one of those details has to do with the screws that hold the connector together. It's interesting that um, if you use a ferrous material or a metal that's magnetic and you run current through conductors that are next to that metal, in some cases, you can actually hear slight colorations. So recognizing that, we make sure that the, even the screws that we use in the connector are non-magnetic. So I just want to show you this. This is the audiophile grade connector, and you'll notice I'm using a magnet. And you can see that the screw holding it together is quite magnetic. And you can hear this. So what we do in the manufacture of our, our connectors is we specify pure stainless, pure stainless screws. They're more expensive. It's not a huge difference, but it is a difference. 